Hi class, welcome to Math is Fun Demental. Today we are going to learn about perimeter circumference and area in geometry. So we're going to start with some basic formulas. We have a rectangle, triangle, square, and a circle that we're going to be looking at today. So rectangle, what perimeter means, perimeter is the length that goes all the way around your figure. So if I have length and width now in a rectangle, we know that this is also going to be length and this is also going to be width. These sides are always, opposite sides are always congruent in a rectangle. If I want the perimeter, the length, all the way around, I'm just going to add all those parts together. So I'm going to have L plus L plus W plus W, or I can write that as 2L plus 2W. All right, now for area, area of a rectangle is going to be just length times width. So if I take length times width, I'm going to move my A down here, um, then I have my area formula. So to clean this up a little bit, just so we have a nice little formula box for us, uh, perimeter is 2L plus 2W and area is L times W. All right, now with a square, a square is also a rectangle. But in a square, all the sides are congruent to each other. So here, you can use the formulas that we just learned for rectangle with the square. But there's also special formulas for a square in case you want. They're kind of like shortcuts. Uh, so perimeter of a square, because all four sides are the same, and they're going to use S for the side length, we can just take 4 times S to find that, that length that goes all the way around our square. And then area, if we think length times width, we actually get side times side, which we can rewrite as side squared or side times side. All right, for a triangle, triangle, we have our diagram labeled here. Perimeter, remember, is the length of all the sides of our figure. So if you see that H and that dashed line inside of our triangle, it's not actually one of the sides. So we don't want to include that one in the perimeter. But we do want ha to have A plus B plus C. So adding up all three of those sides of our triangle. Now area of a triangle is going to be a little more difficult than our rectangle or our square. Area of a triangle, and you know what, let me show you a little example of why. If I have a rectangle, and let's say I have base, let's make this B, base and height. If I want the area of the rectangle, area of the rectangle, I would have base times height. If I split that rectangle in half, I get a triangle, which is why the area of my triangle is one half base times height. So we want to remember that one half. Sometimes it's pretty easy to forget the one half with our triangle, but it's half of a rectangle. So hopefully that'll help you visualize what's going on and remember that formula. All right, and circle, for a circle with radius r, this is our, what we call radius of our circle. Circumference of a circle is kind of like perimeter. It's the length that goes all the way around. We call it circumference. And our formula for circumference is 2 pi times r. And now you usually see it 2 pi r. I actually like to write it as 2 r pi because we usually put pi at the end when we write our number. Now, if we think about 2 times the radius, we get something called the diameter. Diameter, let me write that in here, diameter is the length from one side all the way to the other through the center. So I can write this as diameter times pi as well. Now, area of a circle is going to be um, well, again, people usually write pi r squared, 
But sometimes this is a little misleading because when we write our number, we always put pi at the end and we only want to square the r. So I'm going to write this slightly differently. I'm going to write r squared times pi. You can still think of it as pi r squared, but I like this e a little bit better. It shows that we only square the r, we only square the radius, and then pi is always at the end. Just helps you a little bit, I think. All right, so now that we have our formulas, let's look at an example. So here we have a nice little picture of a gardening club. And the gardening club is building this rectangular garden and it has a fenced in gravel path going all the way around it. I've labeled the fence, the gravel, you can see the garden. They wanna know how much fencing material will they need and how much gravel will they need for the path. So now we have to think, okay, we have a rectangle, but do I do perimeter or area? Now in this case, we actually need to do both. Well, we want how much fencing. The amount of fencing only goes around the outside of our rectangle. That's what we call the perimeter. So for that part, we need just the perimeter to find the amount of fencing. And then when they say how much gravel, well, we're using gravel to fill that space in between the garden and the fence. When it fills up like that and it's not just the outside part, that's area. So here we want to find the area of that gravel part. So let's, let's separate these a little bit more. I'm going to separate the garden from the gravel because we're gonna want just the gravel when we do the area. It's gonna take a couple steps. So let's do fencing first. Let's do the fencing. All right, so we want how much fencing? So let's see, we're given some dimensions here. We have 16 by 22 for our garden and then four feet all the way around. So if I add another four feet here and four feet here, then my length from that side of our fence is going to be 16 plus 4 on either side. So that's actually going to be 24 feet. All right. And then we do this one. And we have 22 plus 4 and another 4. So that's going to be 22 plus 8, which is 30 feet. All right. So our fencing is going to be 24, 24, 30, and 30. Add those together. We have 8 here, and let's see, 6 plus 4 is 10. So our amount of fencing, we're going to need 108 feet of fencing. And because it's a word problem, we really do want to complete that answer with what we were finding. So 108 feet of fencing. All right, now let's talk about the gravel. So the gravel is going to be the area of just that part of our, of our garden with the gravel. So it doesn't include the area on the inside where it's grass. So what we can do is we can find the area of the whole part and then take out or subtract the area of the garden itself. So let's do area and I'll just put area total. All right, so we know our area formula for a rectangle, which is length times width. And my length and width of the total space is 24 times 30. All right, so 24 times 30. Well, let's see, I've got, I'm gonna do my little trick here. I've got 20 plus four, and I have, well, times 30, and I'm just gonna distribute that in. It's a little easier. Two times three is six, so that's 600 plus 120. So that's gonna give me 720, and it's area, so we have to remember to square our units, feet squared. All right, and then we want the area, because that's not, we're not done yet. 720 is the entire space, all the gravel plus the grass and the bushes and everything else in the garden. And we just want the gravel. So we need to take out that, that grassy space in the middle. 
So I want area of the garden, and I'm going to subtract that out. So our garden, let's see, is going to be 16 by 22. So 16 times 22, and I'm going to split that up, 10 and 6, 20 and 2, and then I've got 220, 120, and 12. Again, that confuses you. You can multiply however you want. If you have a calculator, you can even use that. Um, I don't have a calculator on me. So that's two, four, five, and three. So here we've got 352 feet squared for the area of just the garden. So now, let me erase my work here. Now, if I want the area of the gravel, gravel, I want to take the total area and subtract the area from the garden. So I want 720 minus 352, and I want to subtract that out. So let's see, let's borrow. I've got an eight there. Borrow again. 11 minus five is six, and then three. So our area of the gravel space is gonna be 368 feet squared or square feet of gravel. All right, and that's how to find our two answers. Okay, so next part of our lesson, going on to the next page, we have another example, slightly different. It's not a word problem this time. It's a graph on a coordinate plane. It says, what is a perimeter and area? All right, so we have both parts, perimeter and area of our triangle. So perimeter, remember, is just the length of all the sides. Now, for the horizontal, the horizontal and vertical sides, I can just simply count the lengths. So here I go from negative three all the way to positive three, so that's gonna give me six units. And then vertically, I go from negative two to six, which gives me eight units. Now diagonally, remember from our last video, our last lesson, we have to find that length either using the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem. I'm partial to Pythagorean theorem, so I'm gonna use that one. All right, so we've got, so to find the length of GE, I'm gonna, I'm gonna label it so I know what my work is. So I have six squared plus eight squared equals, I'm just gonna call it C squared. All right, 36 plus 64 is C squared. That gives me 100, ooh, which is nice. So I know that that length is 10 units. So it didn't take too long. Granted, you might need to you know, practice a little bit before you get as quick as me, but, but you'll get there, don't worry. All right, so now I can find my perimeter is gonna be 10 plus six plus eight. So perimeter is gonna be 10 plus 14, which is 24. Now in this case, I'm not given any units in this problem. Like last problem we had feet. In this problem we don't have any, but I still need to include units in my answer because perimeter represents a length. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply gonna put the word units because I don't really know what they are. All right, area, area of a triangle is one half base times height. And I don't think we really mentioned it before, but base and height, when you're doing area, they always need to be perpendicular. They have to meet at 90 degrees. So we're gonna use those two sides of our triangle that meet at 90 degrees. So that's gonna be our six and our eight. So our area is going to be, let's see, 24. And then remember for our units for area, we wanna square it, units squared. All right, and that was that example. Now, if I went too fast, and this goes for any of my videos, if I'm going too fast, remember you can always pause and rewind, watch it as many times as you need to. All right, last example. We want to look at circles. So find the circumference and area of the circle with diameter 10 inches. Now notice, I like to underline some things in the problems when I do examples, because then I make sure I don't miss anything. It's easier for me to see the information. 
So I have 10 inch diameter. So from here to here is gonna be 10 inches. Give exact in terms of pi and approximate, which is decimal answers to the nearest hundredth. All right, so let's see. If my diameter is 10, circumference, I have two formulas, but one does include the diameter. It's diameter times pi. So that's just gonna be 10 pi inches. The circumference is just the length, so we all, we'll just leave inches the way it is. We don't need to square our units. So circumference is 10, inch, 10 pi inches. Now that's our exact answer. We want to approximate that. So circumference, ooh, you know what? I'm not gonna box it yet then, so I can include them both. Circumference approximately, so there's our symbol for approximately, is going to be 10 times pi approximately to the nearest hundredth. So um, we need a calculator. So let's get a calculator here. All right, and we'll go to our scientific calculator. So 10 times pi, we need our calculator here. Oops, times, so pi times 10 equals 31.415. Now if I want two decimals, I always need to round to two decimals. So I need 31.42 approximately. 31.42 inches for my approximate circumference. All right, and then I need to do area. Area of my circle is going to be, oops, I lost my full screen here. I'll bring it back out to full screen. Is pi times r squared, or like I like to write it, r squared times pi. Now, my diameter is 10, and the radius is always half of the diameter. So my radius is gonna be five inches. So I'm gonna have five squared times pi, which is 25 pi, and it's area, so we wanna square our units. Inches squared. We're not squaring our answer, we're just squaring the units. So that's gonna give me my exact area. And then for my approximate area, again, I need to use that calculator. So let's bring our calculator back out here and I want 25 times pi. 25 times pi is gonna give us, remember we're rounding to two decimal places, 78.539. So that's gonna be 78.54. All right, so bring it back to full screen. 70, darn it, and I forgot what it was, 78. 0.54, all right, 78.54 inches squared for my approximate answer for my area. Okay, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.